Hi guys. So for those of you who came in after the announcement, uh, this is the link to the deck. It's been shared already. That way you can take it with you when you go and you don't have to wait for the OpenStack folks to post it after the conference. Um, if you try to access it on mobile, it looks super wonky. So that's the disclaimer. Adi, your thing's not working. Nope. All right, so uh, thank you everyone for coming to the state of SSL and TLS and Barbican. Actually, as people were wandering in, I had to ask if you were in the right place. I did not expect such a uh, prolific turnout to talk about TLS certificates. Usually when I start talking about them, people run in the opposite direction or look at me quizzically. So I've got a full room of people who actually want to hear this, which is very exciting. Um, my name's Sheena Gregson. I'm a product manager at Mirantis. In a recent previous life, I was the product manager for Barbican and SSL at Rackspace. Um, so this topic is near and dear to my heart. Um, and then my presenters, I'm joined by John Wood, who is the, uh, an architect at Rackspace focused on Barbican, and he was one of the original Barbican contributors. He's also one of the core contribs right now. And Ade Lee, who is another one of the core contributors joining us from Red Hat. Is it working? I think it's working. Um, and he's a he, core contributor from Red Hat who's focused on the Barbican and dog tag integration for, uh, for uh, secret store and certificate authority. Sweet, it's working, thank you. So um, today we'll be talking about four general topics. The first is what is Barbican? So if you accidentally wandered in here, uh, we're just looking for a place to sit down, or you have no context, you haven't, you haven't heard about Barbican before, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what the goals are, are of the projects generally. Uh, we'll talk about where we are today with respect to TLS provisioning and lifecycle management. We'll talk about where we're going, so the long-term vision in Barbican for TLS lifecycle management. And then uh, we'll, talk, we'll give you a couple of other opportunities for places to interact with Barbican, uh, Barbican team members, Barbican contributors uh, at the summit over the next couple of days. So first off, what is Barbican? Uh, Barbican has two main goals. The first is to enable uh, secret storage, so secure storage and generation of secrets. Um, and m much like any of the other OpenStack projects, there's a plugin-based approach used here, so you have multiple backends that can, you can choose from in your OpenStack deployment uh, depending on your need. So we've got uh, HSM backend that's been uh, made available. We've got a KMIT backend. You can use the dog tag secret store. And of course, if there's not a plugin that you like, please feel free to come contribute to the Barbican plugin options um, and developer speak, pull request accepted. Um, on the other side of the, the goals, we are looking at trying to do better certificate management. So Barbican is, uh, is a secret store first and foremost, but one of the secrets that you guys obviously care very deeply about is TLS certificates. So we'd like to make that less painful. Uh, painless is probably a bridge too far. Uh, but less painful and enable integration with multiple public and private certificate authorities. So before I hand off uh, the, the clicker to Ade to talk about where we are today, I'd like to give you guys kind of the Barbican vision for the long-term TLS management roadmap inside of Barbican. Um, I was in the enterprise TLS space in 2014, and for those of you who joined me, that was a wild ride. Um, in April, we had Heartbleed emerge, the Heartbleed exploit, and uh, that, that affected hundreds of thousands of users. It resulted in hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of certificates being rotated between the, uh, the scope of the exploit and also the amount of media coverage it received. So I actually got calls from my parents, and they told me, like, have you heard about this thing? People are stealing our information. My parents are not tech folks, so it was really entertaining to hear their version of what the media was sharing with them about TLS exploits. Um, so that happened in April, and then later in the year, Google um, made the announcement that they were going to deprecate support for certificates issued with the SHA-1 hash algorithm. Um, and so that also affected, at the point of their announcement, more than 80% of certificates that were live in the wild. So um, lots, lots of exploits, lots of changes last year. And I think because we're talking about a security product, it would be very naive to say that we won't see a year like 2014 again. Um, obviously, I'd like to see those years uh, less frequently, but those, those types of changes are going to happen. You know, security is all about evolution and continuing to stay ahead of the most advanced attacks and all of the new technology that enables people to break the current methods. So we're going to need to be able to, to change 
out uh, certificates in the next years for different reasons, but the same type of, of use cases or the same type of workflow would apply. Um, and so in Barbican, in order to support kind of enterprise level survival of certpocalypse in the future, um, we will need to be able to order certificates from multiple CAs. So if we're talking about an enterprise level uh, use case for Barbican, maybe you want to talk to multiple certificate authorities. You care about getting a certificate from Symantec. You care about getting a certificate from Digicert. You want to issue certificates from your internal private CA. And you're going to want to do that through the same Barbican instance. So enabling that management at scale really means that we need to be able to plug and play multiple certificate authorities at the same time. Um, in addition to that, being able to reissue certificates not only to, uh, to address key compromises, but also to upgrade certificates. So last year, uh, upgrading certificates from SHA-1 to SHA-256. Uh, in the future, enabling users to upgrade to uh, elliptic curve cryptography certs and, uh, and whatever comes after that. Uh, in line with that, you're going to want to see revocation capabilities. So Barbican should be capable of revoking certificates. Um, in order to, to help further the security story, make sure that you are revoking certificates if you've experienced a key compromise, or maybe you just have too many in the wild. You, you have two or three that are, that are live at the same time, and you're, if you're not using them, you might as well get rid of them to reduce your, um, your, your security scope, what you have to manage. Uh, and finally, renewing certificates, uh, very much in line with ordering. You know, that's just part of the, the, the story for management. All of this needs to be a part of Barbican if we're going to realistically say that it is a complete certificate manager. And so with that in mind, I'm going to hand, hand everything over to Ade, and he's going to talk to you guys about exactly what you can do in Barbican today. Mm -hmm. OK, so um, can you guys hear me? OK, good. So uh, it, it's actually a pretty, pretty simple story as to what we can do today if we actually just go back to the slide for a second. Um, uh, the majority of what we can do is pretty much that top uh, right corner over there, which is to order, which is basically creating and getting that initial certificate. Um, a lot of the support for the rest of, the, of that is uh, in progress and, and will hopefully get done through Liberty, or most of it through Liberty. But um, we're, I'm going to talk specifically about order, the top part over there, and, and how you can do that in, in Bob again today. So, uh, the first thing to, to talk about is, you know, what kind of clients we have available. So um, like every uh, other OpenStack service, we have a REST interface um, that Barbican provides in order for you to generate a certificate. That's the orders interface uh, on the Barbican side. Um, and uh, you can talk to that directly to the API. I mean, everyone can do curl calls and, and so on. Uh, it doesn't get us any simpler than that. Uh, the problem of thing, and you know, you're very close to, the, to Barbican code, you can get the latest changes and so on and so forth. Um, it's not very user friendly, of course. Um, you have to take the JSON that you get back from the curl, you have to parse it and so on and so forth. Um, and it, it also ties your application very closely to Barbican. So um, if you want to be able to issue to other types of certificates or use other kinds of applications other than Barbican, um, uh, you're kind of stuck if you go directly to the API. Um, a little bit uh, higher than that, of course, is a uh, Python Barbican client. So just like the other OpenStack services, we all have a, a client uh, as well, which also provides a CLI. Um, this is still very close to the Barbican code. It's much more user friendly. Um, it allows you to, especially if you use something like the CLI, it uh, allows you to, gener to interact with the um, uh, the, the API, and you have um, uh, objects that um, will, de will you know, take all the JSON and turn them into nice things that you can use. Um, again, your application is going to be very tied to Barbican because that's specific to the API. Um, and then, of course, there are questions as to what happens in the future with the, with the CLI and the, and the client when we start moving into, into the open SDK, things like that. Um, finally, there's Certmonger. Uh, Certmonger is a, if you don't, didn't know, it's a widely used uh, OS daemon. Um, it has very generic interfaces, so things like GetCert, for example, um, that you can use to talk to just about any kind of CA in the back end. The way it talks to, uh, so what you can do, for example, you can say GetCert, um, and then a Certmonger will generate, a CS, uh, generate some keys for you, will generate a CSR, send that over to your CA, um, get, your C, get your certificate back. It may poll for your certificate periodically if that certificate has not yet been issued. 
Um, and then you can ask Cert Monger, for example, to track the certificate um, and wait to see when it starts to expire. And when it starts to expire, when it's close to ex expiration, Cert Monger will actually go and do a Cert request uh, to uh, renew that Cert um, if you choose to do so. Um, it, the way that it does that kind of thing is um, by using helper scripts. Um, so in this particular case, uh, if you wanted to talk from Certmonger to Barbican, you'd write a helper script in Python or whatever language. In this particular case, it would be Python. Using the Python uh, Barbican client, um, and you would ask it to do these things for, say, issuing a request or whatever the case may be. Um, relatively easy to do. Um, hasn't been done yet. That's the, that's the downside. Um, but I would expect that it would be done by uh, early Liberty, so within a month or month and a half from now, I would say. So, so um, Barbican exposes um, ordering certificates through the orders interface. And there are three kinds of certificate orders that you are able to do these days. Um, the last one over there, the custom request, is actually the first one that was implemented. Um, and that allows you to, if you know exactly which CA is in the back end over there and you know how to communicate with that CA, you can send the specific CA uh, parameters uh, that, you might, that you would need. Uh, so those would include things like a CSR and maybe other billing parameters and so on and so forth. Various things that are needed by that specific CA directly through Barbican and Barbican just acts sort of as a, pa a pass-through there. Um, it will then uh, pass all that information through to your CA, and your CA will then act upon it, and you can get your cert that way. Um, we did that. that was, that's been around since Juno, and uh, we did that sort of as a first pass as being able, you know, if you really, really needed to get a cert out and or you needed something that was custom for a specific CA, um, this is what you needed to do. Um, it kind of diminishes the power of the abstraction, though, because sometimes you don't want your client necessarily to know uh, what CA is in the back end, or maybe your client doesn't care. All your client wants is a cert. Um, and so that's why we added, in, in Kilo, we added two additional types of requests. Uh, the foot, the, these two types of requests are generic parameters that you would expect to be able to see across all CAs. Um, so, for example, a simple CMC request allows you to specify, I think it's even called request or something like that, but it's a basic CMC request, which in, in its uh, most simple form is a CSR. Um, and so, in, what you would do there is you would use this interface to send a simple CMC request, and we'll see an example of that in a few minutes, um, and that would go to your, your CA and you'd get your, your, your certificate that way. Um, the stored key request is interesting. Um, it allows you to, it takes advantage of the fact that Barbican is a secret store as well as a, a certificate system. Um, and the idea here is that you would store a, or generate a symmetric, uh, an asymmetric key pair, so an RSA key pair, um, uh, ahead of time. And then uh, you could ask Barbican, you could just provide a reference to that stored key container. Um, to Barbican, and Barbican would generate a CSR on your behalf um, and then send that off to your CA. Um, there is a, um, this is particularly useful in, in sort of a provisioning case where um, you might want to provision some things ahead of time um, and all you would need, to, you would basically generate those suits ahead of time for your whatever, uh, whatever client you wanted to, um, create the suit and then just bring the suit down specifically for that CA. In that particular case, what, you'd be, what would be returned would, could be conceivably both references to both the, CA, both the certificates and any intermediate suits, um, as well as the private and public keys. You can get everything all in one big container. So in fact, um, that is what well, the next slide shows you. So this next slide is what actually comes back from any of these calls. It's a certificate type container. A container is essentially just, it's Barbican concept, which is just a grouping of related secrets. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, you have a, um, uh, you know, you always get a certificate. Um, you might get intermediates, which is a PKCS7 chain, uh, just showing um, all, everything you needed for your client to chain back to your root CA. Um, and in the case of the, of the stored key case, you'd get a reference to the private key and any passphrase that we use uh, to encrypt that private key. Um, and these, what the locks are, show, are, are representing over here is that these are actually stored as secrets within Barbican. So what you're not, you're not actually getting uh, 
uh, the, um, the actual secrets or anything in there. What you're getting are references to the secrets, which you can then go get uh, from Barbican, assuming that you have the appropriate um, you know, uh, authorizations and so on and so forth. Okay. So uh, just to give it an idea of the data flow for the certificates, um, there are four different boxes over here. You've got the client on the one side, which could be Sootmonger or Python client or Cruel or whatever the case may be. We've got Barbican, uh, which is going to process the order, and it's going to do it asynchronously. Um, so when, it, when the order is received, there'll be an asynchronous process that kicks off at some point um, and sends that over to the CA plugins. The Barbican uh, CA plugins are the things that actually talk to the various CAs in the back end. And as Sheena mentioned, you can actually talk to many different kinds of either private or public CAs. Um, so Barbican, it's, the core itself, can have multiple CA plugins. Um, and each of those multiple CA plugins can actually talk to multiple CAs. Um, they don't necessarily have to, t they talk to specific CA type, uh, but they don't necessarily have to talk to just a single CA. In fact, one of the um, features that we're going to add into Liberty um, which has been implemented on one of the, uh, the plugins that's there, which is the dog tag plugin, um, is the ability to create more, uh, lots of uh, subordinate CAs, um, which means that uh, as, a, as a project admin, I might be able to say, um, create a CA for my project on the fly. So you could have a per project specific CA and per project specific uh, identity domain. Um, but that's, that's coming up uh, conceivably in Liberty as well too. So um, once the order, so there's an order that's generated on the client, it goes to Barbican. Barbican uh, has some processing that takes place, ultimately requests a certificate from the CA plugin, and ultimately then goes to the CA. Now at that point, uh, one of two things can happen. Um, the, it can sit on the CA and wait until the, um, an agent on the CA decides to approve it. Uh, that's the standard kind of a, a way. And, and when that happens, then the, C, the certificate is generated. Or under certain circumstances, uh, CAs will allow you uh, in the immediate issuance of particular certificates. Uh, this could be something like an anchor kind of thing or in the dog tag sort of thing. If you ask for a specific type of certificate, it automatically gets generated because the CA plugin talks to the CA through a sort of a trusted relationship. Um, in any case, ultimately the CA is generated. Um, the CA plugin will retrieve the certificate. In the case where you have to wait for it to be approved and it isn't approved automatically, um, Barbican and the CA uh, will actually poll the CA periodically to check to see whether or not the CA has been, uh, has been um, generated. Uh, the certificate is generated, it's retrieved, it's stored inside a certificate container, and that's the thing that the client can actually extract. So uh, just a simple demo. Uh, using, uh, we're going to use curl just so you can see all of the different parameters that are there. It's kind of the, the interface kind of thing um, of just doing a simple CMC order. Um, we did this demo with a, um, a dog tag instance in the back end. And if you're not familiar with what dog tag is, dog tag is an enterprise CA that um, is um, uh, supported by Red Hat. It happens to be the one that I'm a lead developer on. Um, and uh, it's been used in, uh, in a lot of different places. It's, it's in used in some of the biggest uh, PKI deployments in the world, uh, all of the three-letter agencies and so on and so forth. Uh, they tend to, tend to use dog tag to support their, their certificate issuances. Um, but uh, dog tag has the ability both to store secrets, um, and so that's why at the bottom of here you can see there's a place here. Uh, let's see if I can this works. Yep, right there. So uh, there's a secret store. So one of the secret store plugins is in fact a dog tag plugin. Um, and it can also be one of the certificate plugins. So we can do both uh, in this particular case. You don't have to, but you can. Um, what's important here over here is that this is just basically some Barbican configuration, uh, which tells it to basically use dog tag. There's a dog tag instance at this port over here. Um, it, is, it has a NSS database in which it's stored a credential for a, a trusted agent to talk to it. Um, and um, this auto-approved profiles means that if I send in a specific request for uh, a certificate with that auto-approved profile, I'll automatically get that suit generated um, and, um, and it'll go from there. So uh, what CA, first thing you might want to do is to check out what CAs are installed. So you're going to do a get on the CA's interface 
and you see, okay, there are two CAs there, both of which have you know, that CA ID. Let's look at one of them, and there's the CA ID, and you can see, sure enough, uh, that's the CA, and it's the dog tag CA. So we're gonna go ahead and use that one. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna generate my private key using OpenSSL. There's my private key. Um, I'm gonna take that private key and I'm gonna generate um, a CSR. Um, and I'm going to then base64 encode it and turn it into one long string. Um, and that, you know, a really, really long string which I've truncated over there. I'm gonna take that really, really long string. I'm gonna put it in an order. So you can see there I'm doing a, I'm doing a post um, and it's going, it's a, of type certificates uh, on, the, on the orders interface. Here's my data over here that's gone into that really, really long string. It's a simple CMC type. I'm gonna to go to that CAID and I'm gonna use that profile. Again, this is the profile for, that is configured to be the one where you can automatically get a search generated. Um, and I get back an order reference. So an order has just been created. At this point, asynchronously, a, an order, um, it's being processed by Barbican. So what I need to do is I need to get the result of that order. Okay, and so I'm gonna get that order. Okay, and I see that in this particular case, uh, because the order has been automatically, uh, it would either come back as pending or it would come back as active. Pending if we were still waiting for someone to act on it on the CA. Active if you weren't. The CA has been generated and there is a reference to my certificate container. So to get my certificate, I've gotta go ahead and get that container. I get that container, so I go to the containers interface. Here are two secret references. One's for the certificate, one's for the intermediates, and the intermediates is the PKCS7. Um, let's go get it. So I get the payload of that particular ID, and there's my certificate, and I'm gonna do the same thing for the intermediates. So, um, so this is just a, a basic uh, demo uh, based on, on uh, using the, just using curl, to, uh, and you can kind of see how a certificate could, could easily be generated that way. So I'm gonna hand it over to um, John right now, who is gonna talk about, just do a quick demo on how to do it uh, using the store key case, uh, using the CLI. Looks pretty. Thank you, Adi. Yeah. Appreciate it. So what's better than one demo, two demos? So this one's gonna focus on our command line interface. Um, so you'll get to see a little bit of how that looks and works. And we're also going to look at the stored key certificate type, so you actually uh, create a, se a, a secret up front, a, a key pair up front, and then Barbican will generate a certificate based on that. And so to, to create that public-private key pair, um, we um, start with an order that's an asymmetric type, as you see up there. Let me make sure I get this laser pointer working here, yeah. Right there, and so um, just a familiar sort of, sort of mode of operation, you have your order create call, you pass in your parameters and you get your, your uh, URI back out so you can check back on the status of that order. Just using a good old get call with the order. And you can see that once the, once the order becomes active, now you have your container reference here and that contains your key pair container. And with that information then, you can go ahead and, and follow up with another order that's gonna create your certificate. And so you can see you pass in the, the certificate type, that's the type of the, the order that we're gonna create. And the stored key is the mode that we wanna to use to create that certificate. And then you can see our container, that was the container that we uh, received back from the previous order call. And we get our, a new order ID that's re related to this particular order creation step. And now we can follow up again with a, with a, with a get call and that's that, that new order ID and once that becomes active, now our container reference has the certificate container in it that we, we care about. And so if we actually uh, retrieve information on that particular container, you can see that we have our certificate and intermediates um, secrets that are created out of that process. So the worker actually took that private key that we provided and generated a CSR and then ran it through the process to generate their certificate. Um, at this point in the, the demo, we would test if you're actually awake or not because you realize that there's actually a bug here. We should have put our private key here as well. So that'll be uh, a little bug that we have to fix um, pretty, pretty quick. But the idea is that this, be, this would represent then a complete 
certificate that you could hand this, the, the container URI off to a, a provider and they would have all the pieces they would need to install that certificate onto a, a load balancer or a server or what have you. And so this is just showing how you can retrieve the actual certificate information back out using the CLI. So again, it's just a, a simple get on the secret. And here's the, the uh, URI that we had in that previous uh, retrieve call. So where are we going? Um, you know, if we kind of revisit what Sheena had, had displayed earlier, um, this is kind of the, the end game for, for the TLS story and Barbican. And so kind of, it, it would be good to kind of assess where we are now, what, what still has to, has to be done in Liberty and beyond. And so this, kind of, this graphic kind of depicts that we've spent a lot of time getting the order process beefed up in Barbican, um, especially on the dog tag front. Um, so we have a lot of the interaction worked out between Barbican and the plugin um, to initiate a certificate and, and collect data from the API side and send it to the workers to, to process with the, uh, the CA plugins. And as it turns out, a lot of those workflows are needed for the renew process. So we're kind of giving ourselves credit for uh, uh, having some amount of the re renew workflow um, done as well. Uh, reissue and revoke, um, we, we, we definitely need to get more work done on that. Um, all three of these actually um, have blueprints that we're gonna look at in a second. So how can folks help out? Um, so we have a number of blueprints that are hanging out there um, that need to be reviewed, approved, and then eventually coded. So uh, anybody that's, that has free cycles to at least give us some reviews, um, that would be very much appreciated. Um, we were also, we're also interested in use cases. If you have inter integration use cases um, that, that could benefit from having this Barbican SSL workflow management applied to, we definitely love to hear from you. We're here all week, as they say, um, and I'll show you in a second the specifics, you know, from a schedule perspective. So, getting into like the specifics of the, of the blueprints themselves, you know, here's the three basic actions that we want to support in certificates, but we also want to um, support a mode where you don't even have a private key up front. Um, you want Barbican to to actually generate the private key and CSR as well as the certificate. And that's kind of the true automation. You know, I'm a provider that wants to help out a customer uh, provision something within, within the environment. Um, that would be the mode that, that uh, they would use for, for that purpose. But we also want a way for clients to discover kind of what's available in a plugin, what, what certificate types are available, what profiles are available specifically. Um, if, I'm, if I'm talking semantic, you know, what specific types of search from a product perspective does that the semantic support and exposing that in a way that can be discovered with the clients. Um, and again, some of these cancel update order, these are all about you know, managing orders in general in Barbican, but, but they also have an impact on how that interacts with the, the CA plugins to gracefully handle those transitions with the CAs. Uh, on, the, on the coding front, we, we definitely want to get more traction on semantic and Digicert plugins um, to have those available um, as options. And we also want to have uh, some means of telling the world outside of Barbican when a certificate's ready to go. Um, so that, so a provider knows when a certificate's ready and can actually pr uh, provision that onto load balancers, servers, what have you. So we have a general link here. You know, obviously you can go to Launchpad to our project location to see a list of blueprints, but also on this slide deck, deck we've included specific links to specific blueprints um, that were related to that previous slide. Um, as far as implementations are concerned, uh, you know, on the dog tag front, you can certainly uh, reach Ade um, if you're interested in, in helping out on the dog tag front. Uh, Semantic, Rackspace has really been doing a lot of work so far on that. So uh, Chelsea, Chelly Gel, and myself um, are good points of contact. Um, Jeff Fisher on the DigiCert front, uh, you know, if you're interested in helping out there, he would be a good guy to locate. And as usual, you can find us on our IRC channel anytime. Like I said, I mean, we're, we're a very open community and we're always looking for, for help. We're always looking for reviewers. We're always look, looking for ways people want to use Barbican and leverage it for their, their um, problems that they're trying to solve. So please let us know. If there's features that are missing. Now is a great time to let us know so that we can potentially get that rolled into to Liberty. Let's see, what's next? Am I looking on time? Looking okay on time. So we have a break working session coming up at 3.30.
We do have a conflict at a, a later working session with the uh, Enterprise Ready OpenStack Storage as a Service. Uh, I believe they're going to talk about sender or Barbican interactions and, and encryption. So we're going to try to have you know, people from our team in both places at once. And we have a later working session today um, that's also at the same time as a Swift on disk encryption um, working session. So just bear all this in mind. Tomorrow we have quite a few working sessions as you can see. There's a Swift working session as well. And finally we have a common use cases and options for Barbican. So if you really want to see how, how current projects are interacting with Barbican, this is an excellent presentation to go to. Um, you'll see a variety of use cases that are already implemented and already fleshed out um, to give you a sense for, for how you could potentially use Barbican. So that would be a great one to attend. And then finally on Friday, if you know people are still around for that, not flying out, or they're not like off enjoying the wonderful weather here in Vancouver, um, please consider going to our contributor meetup. This is kind of a, a chance to recap what we've been doing this week, um, hopefully nail down um, a roadmap. So if there's a feature you really want in, uh, that, this would be a good time or before that to try to hit us up um, and see if we can uh, potentially get that into the, into the schedule. So if you have any questions, please let us know. You know. Um, oh, go for it. I guess we can start. Oh, yes, please. If you don't mind using the, the microphone. Are you aware of the Let's Encrypt uh, initiative from the EFF? I am not, personally. OK, then you, I think you must have a look. That's, uh, they provide an API, and you can get free certs. Right. And they do that because they want the world to be encrypted. Yes. Okay. So uh, uh, definitely it. supporting Let's Encrypt from the EFF would be great. Yeah, so actually um, I took a look at it and it's granted been a little bit, um, but Let's Encrypt is a really cool opportunity to, to use uh, technology to, uh, if I remember correctly, you actually get a root access to the device uh, and you apply um, a package and executable into the device and it goes and calls out and negotiates a certificate from there. It's been a while, um, but the, the moral of the story is last time I looked, I don't remember there being a clean way to integrate with Barbican, but I know that they've looked at it and I imagine it'll continue to be a point of interest as a, an easy and, and cheap way, a, an inexpensive uh, certificate authority option for going forward. If I've totally mucked that up, Thomas, we work together, so you can come find me and I can, I can uh, clarify. Anyone else that's, uh, that didn't like that explanation, see me after and I'll be happy to, <laughs> to revise. Yes. Is OCSP part of your revoke plans? So uh, I think, I mean, you'd be able to revoke um, suits from, uh, from, from here. Uh, you typically, you have a, a, you know, within the suits, you have a, a URL that you can go to to check the validity of the suits and do OCSP type queries and stuff like that. Um, there isn't any current plan to do an OCSP server on Barbican, but but I and I don't think there's a need to necessarily yet. If there is, then we may have to consider it. Barbican is also doing the interface between CA.ca itself. Right. So we wouldn't be doing the OCSP responder or the CRL initially. So it would be CA behind Barbican. Fair enough. For those of you who didn't hear that, I believe the phrase was Barbican is intended to interact with certificate authorities, not represent a certificate authority itself, so it would defer to the CA for the, the revocation source of truth. And for those of you who, who didn't catch him, Paul Kerr in the corner is another Barbican contributor that you're welcome to attack after this presentation <laughs> if you have additional questions. Yes. Yes. I'm uh, new to Barbican and uh, I'm searching for a, a way where the, the, the private keys are stored in a more secure way. Is there a, an interface to HSMs and uh, how, how, what do I have to expect? What can I expect? So all the secrets themselves are, are stored using a, an interface called a, a secret store plugin interface. And then that can work with uh, what we call HSM or crypto store interfaces. And those are where you can introduce things like HSMs to actually back the secret. So um, we would use those to actually encrypt the secret, and Barbican would never have access to the actual encryption key um, that's being used by the HSM. And so everything out stored outside of the HSM is encrypted by the HSM in that okay. mode. If, that, if that's and these integrations are already available. Yes, we're using a PKCS 11 
plug in right now to support that. Um, at the secret store level, which is kind of a level up from that, we have a KMIP implementation. If you have a KMIP uh, device or, or service that, you're, that you have available in your enterprise, you can use that instead. And, and you can also use dog tag as well too. So dog tag also uh, talks to um, at different HSMs, Luna, say, you know, SafeNet, whatever the case may be. Okay, thanks. Else? I guess that's it. All right. Thanks again, Thank guys. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it.